All right, let's get you all the latest updates. Day 13 now of Putin's war against Ukraine. So far, Ukraine has continued to hold up the Russian advance. Kyiv remains under Ukrainian control as of now. So does the second largest city of the country, Kharkiv, in the east. There's been heavy firing in the city of Sumy in northeast Ukraine, where Ukraine claims that intense shelling also took place. Now, the country said that during the ongoing war, they've claimed that they've shot down 52 Russian jets and 69 choppers. Russian forces, on the other hand, have completely demolished uh, the largest shopping mall in Kherson city. Kherson is a city that's now under Russian control. The third round of talks, meanwhile, were held between Ukraine and Russia. The talks were held over improving logistics of the humanitarian corridor and the ceasefire, over which there's been an endless blame game. Ukraine claiming Russia is violating ceasefire. Russia claiming Ukraine is not cooperating. Now, in Kyiv, people were seen seeking refuge in places of worship, believing that Russians will spare such religious structures as they're escalating their aggression and also multiple reports coming in of residential settlements being targeted. Take a look at this exclusive report from St. Sophia's Cathedral in Kyiv. Behind me is the big cathedral of Santa Sophia. It's a 1,000-year-old cathedral and one of the biggest centers of uh, orthodoxy, orthodox Christianity. Ukrainians believe that Russians will never attack this church because it is the Russians river this church as much as the Ukrainians, as both these countries, people, both Ukrainians and Russians, follow the same face, orthodox Christianity. And they believe if anybody damages this church, then they will be cursed, it will come to them. And that is the reason they believe that Russians will never attack this place. And this is this square is called Santa Sofia Square, one of the busiest square in Kyiv in normal days. And look how does it, it looks right now. This is Rajesh Pawar for India Today. Now, we've been constantly getting you images and videos of the Russian convoy heading towards and encircling, essentially, Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv. Uh, that's why several residents have chosen to flee from the capital. A cultural center 40 kilometers from Kyiv has now been converted into a help and distribution center. India Today gets you this exclusive report. 40 kilometers from Kyiv city. This is Mozej. And this is their cultural center, which now has become a center to collect all the supplies that can be distributed to various villages from food supplies to blankets over there to a lot of uh, essential toiletries all of that being collected and then being distributed their pillows uh, drinks stuff for children for infants uh, at one point in time over here, people would come, villagers would come to enjoy maybe a play, uh, 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 a musical, uh, young children singing. But today, this has become a place where all of them, all, all of them are on board to ensure that the supplies that have been cut off do not render them absolutely helpless and do not have people in the villages starving. And that's the reason why you see a lot of the community people, villagers who come together from various parts just to get things together and help each other in these difficult times. With VT journalist Pavan Kumar, this is 40 kilometers away from Kiev. Geeta Moon for India Today. What's very clear 13 days into this war is that Ukraine continues to hold its own against the Russian advance. They've claimed to have shot down more than seven Russian war machines in the last three days alone. They're talking about jets and Mi-35 choppers. Here's what Russia also has had to say about Ukraine's claim. Russia fiercely escalates airstrikes on Ukraine. It is using its fighter jets to hit key Ukrainian cities. In the last 72 hours, 
Putin has unleashed the fury of Russia's hellbirds on Kiev and Kharkiv. Ukraine claims to have shot down a Sukhoi Su-34 fighter bomber in Kharkiv on Monday. They have released images of the debris of a Russian plane, completely destroyed and demolished. Ukraine also claims it has shot down more than seven Russian war machines in the last three days, including jets and Mi-35 choppers. Ukrainian authorities have shared several images of pilots who they claim are Russians now in their custody. Russia is using its formidable air superiority to control Ukraine's skies. The most visible Russian aircraft in the Ukraine war is the Sukhoi Su-25, a tough Soviet-era bird that's taken on most attack duties. The Mi-24 is also being used by the Russian forces. They are sturdy, heavily armed and used to support ground troops. The third Russian aircraft seen in the skies over Ukraine is the Sukhoi Su-34, a supersonic medium-range fighter bomber used for tactical strikes. Su-34 have been in eastern and northern Ukraine. Another Russian attack helicopter on combat duty is the Kamau Ka-52. These images of one such helicopter made to force land went viral during the early days of the invasion. Several more are said to be flying sorties on the northern border. The images coming from Ukraine show Russia's plans are striking deeper inside Ukraine than earlier believed. These airstrikes could be the prelude to the real battle for Kiev. Bureau report, India Today. Now, amid all of the violence, and particularly because civilians were getting stranded with no way out, Russia declared a ceasefire in four crucial Ukrainian cities, Kyiv, Kharkiv, Sumy and Mariupol. And this came as a huge relief for India as well, because several students continue to be stranded, particularly in these four cities. The ceasefire also was announced ahead of Prime Minister Modi's uh, conversation with the Ukrainian President Zelensky and also his conversation with the Russian President Putin. On day 12 of invasion, amid raining missiles, rockets and shelling, a big Russian respite. A ceasefire coming into force in four embattled cities. Capital Kyiv, the southern port city of Mariupol, second largest city Kharkiv and Sumy. Russia said the respite will be for civilians who are awaiting evacuation. Russia also opened several humanitarian corridors in response to requests by French President Emmanuel Macron, who spoke to the Russian president. Russian forces said they are using drones to monitor the truce. I hope that NATO will close the sky, and I hope that India, as India Prime Minister called to our president, will also be engaged in this process. And uh, India is a great big country. Uh, many Indians are in Ukraine. Many, many Ukrainians visit India. We yeah. have lots of connections and cultural things together and uh, we need to stay together and I hope uh, it will help us. Prime Minister Narendra Modi dialed Zelensky and discussed evacuation of Indian nationals from Ukraine. The Ukraine president in his tweet appreciated Indian assistance. The Russian ceasefire is a massive boost to Indian efforts to evacuate stranded Indian students in the war zone. बहुत ज्यादा मतलब कह सकते हैं एक तरह से खत्म होने वाले हालात हैं बंदा अगर रहेगा तो एक तरह से अपनी जान पूरी तरह से कुर्बान करने वाली चीज है क्योंकि वहां पे कुछ नहीं बचा वहां पे जो हालात थे वो बहुत ज्यादा ही खराब थे क्योंकि हम लोगों को खाने पीने के लिए भी और किसी भी तरह की व्यवस्था नहीं थी 
और वहाँ पे इवन फूड्स वगैरह सब कुछ खत्म हो गया था हमें बंकर्स में रहने के लिए ही बोला गया था इट ऑल्सो कम्स आफ्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी आस्ट पुट इन टू एनफोर्स सीज फायर टू हेल्प इन मिशन इवेक्यूएशन द मेन चैलेंज रिमेन्स the ongoing shelling there ongoing violence there and the lack of transportation we are in touch with all concerned regarding possible movement the best option for us would be a cease fire of course that allows our to get our students out and uh, we in this connection we have been strongly pressing both the russian and the ukrainian sides but many across the world and ukrainian themselves are not buying the cease fire at face value <laughs> and pointing to how moscow is notorious for flouting them of course it's good news i mean our hearts go out to the indian uh, students but also to the africans and whoever is there and who are civilian population so there need to be a ceasefire there need to we have to get these people out and they have to we have to rescue their life now only one person can do that and that's president putin no ceasefires russia promised to do no no at all the only one thing they they was compromised from the last negotiations were humanitarian corridors only for a couple towns and even though they didn't do their promise the people were bombed and uh, and uh, they uh, russians used heavy um heavy shelling and heavy artillery ukraine сьогодні Instead of humanitarian corridors, they can only make bloody ones. Today, a family was killed in Irpin. A man, a woman, and two children. Right on the road, as in a shooting gallery. Do not trust any word of Russians. They lie all the time. So, first, we agreed about ceasefires for the humanitarian people in game possibility to go out of me. Mariupol and Kharkov and other city and then they start shooting on civilians. Putin has already said that his attacks will stop only if Ukraine drops resistance. So is the ceasefire a genuine humanitarian gesture or a brief lull before an assault of never before scale to break Ukrainian resistance? With Geeta Mohan in Kyiv and Polami Saha in Delhi, Bureau Report India today. From Balenciaga dedicating their show to the Ukrainian refugees at the Paris Fashion Week to other fashion brands and celebrities like Mila Kunis making a significant donation to support people in distress several artists across the world have been stepping up to stand in solidarity with Ukrainians Fashion house Balenciaga stepped up in support of war torn nation Ukraine as the creative director for the show Dema Vazalia who himself is a refugee from Georgia and had to leave his country dedicated the entire show to the Ukrainian people ahead of the show at the Paris Fashion Week the brand put t-shirts in Ukrainian national colors blue and yellow on every attendee seat Vanessa Friedman took to social media to share a picture of the seats which had t-shirts signifying Ukrainian flag. She captioned the post as also on every seat at the Balenciaga show a Ukrainian flag 525 in all. Kim Kardashian was covered in a yellow caution tape for Balenciaga show as the creative director Dema paid tribute to Ukraine. Salma Hayek who also attended the show extended her support to Ukraine by sporting the colors of the embattled nation's flag. The show commenced with a Ukrainian poem recited in the backdrop while the models walked through the snow with their possessions packed in sacks. The official handle of Balenciaga took to social media to share the message behind their show which was a dedication to fearlessness to resistance and to the victory of love and peace. Supermodel Gigi Hadid also announced in social media that she will be donating all of her fashion month earnings towards relief efforts in Ukraine which is currently facing aggressive invasion from Russian troops under the order of President Vladimir Putin. Hollywood couple Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis have raised over 3.5 million dollars after setting up a GoFundMe page to raise money for humanitarian aid for Ukrainian refugees. Kunis, who was born in Chernivtsi, Ukraine in 1983, moved to the US in 1991, and today more than ever she feels proud that her roots belong to Ukraine. Extending his support was also Mila's husband and actor Ashton Kutcher who sat next to her in the video uploaded on the fundraising website. The couple's ultimate aim is to raise 30 million dollars. 
We're raising funds to support a relief effort that will have immediate impact and supply much needed refugee and humanitarian aid to the area. The principal challenge right now is logistics. We need to get housing and we need to get supplies and resources into the area. Fashion brands and businesses like Caring, Louis Vuitton and Chanel too have stepped up to make a significant donation to support thousands of refugees who have fled their country and are now displaced. Some luxury fashion brands like Hermes and Cartier also temporarily shut shop in Russia amidst crisis with Ukraine. Entertainment Bureau, India Today. And that's all we have time for on this broadcast. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to us. We're continuing to get your unmatched coverage on the Ukraine war in just a bit.